YouTube. I'm Monty Crafton. Um, one of the most fun parts of having a home machine shop to me is improving on our Chinese toys. Uh, I have a uh, Chinese lathe, a 1022. Uh, let me see if I can turn the camera around here and just take a picture of it. So, yeah, there we go. That's yeah, a 1022 lathe. It's a uh, variable speed. And uh, it's missing the tailstock right now. I have it off. So that's what I'm thinking about improving. So let's see if I can just get it right back over here now. Uh, oh, we'll bring the camera over here. You need to. It's all about. It's all about the tailstock anyway. So I don't need to be in the picture. Okay, there's my tailstock right here. And I'm going to adapt it. I can zoom. Let's see. There we go. This is like most of them. It has a nut here. You put a wrench on. I have a dedicated wrench, a socket wrench that I put on mine, and it pretty much just stays there. Oh, we go the wrong way. Um, it makes it easier. I have also put a spring. I don't know if you can see it right. In here, there's a spring. Oh, I have to find another light source to zoom in. I'm on a tripod, <laughs> so uh, it's. It's kind of hard to move the camera around to get it right, dragging this big old tripod along with it. But anyway, take my word for it. Below this little plate here that rides between the legs, there's a spring up there, a fairly stout spring, the one I just had laying around. And that improved on it a lot, because without that spring, it, the bottom of these legs are very rough, and they're not even an that meal given. I actually took some measurements on mine and there was quite a bit of difference between up towards the spindle. Uh, I'm using my fingers here but nobody's looking. Uh, quite a bit of difference up towards the spindle where the, it's real thick and then it tapers down to the back. So when you push it forward it gets to the thicker part and of course it hits. And without the spring pushing this bottom uh, slide piece here down well it, it hits a lot so every every half an inch or an inch you seem like you gotta adjust it to get it to, to go down so that you can push it forward a little bit more it kind of kind of a pain in the butt the spring made a big difference it really helped um, right now let's uh, take the camera off here and show a picture of what I'm looking at Now, I think maybe you can see the spring here, but no, might help. But, uh, but anyway, with this nut, I took a tri square and got the distance from here, and there's a line. I scratch right here to the center of my boat and leaving the square tri square bar out to the center line I went on the back side and I draw the uh, a line on the back side where I could see it and then I got the height of this boat and of course I did the same thing put a line so that I know exactly where this boat is you might say a crosshair measuring to the very top. Now there's been a lot of people who have done this and everybody does it pretty much the same way. You drill a hole through this back wall right here with a um, 
with a part, I, I can't think of what else to call it right now, sticking out with a out of center lobe, a cam or whatever. And you would want a, a different type of boat, a big tall boat that you can bore a hole in so that this cam will stick into the hole and because it's all centered you could use your lever and as you move the lever the whole the cam will raise up and uh, you could adjust it by tightening down around I was hoping it was threaded here on the bottom and you could adjust it from the bottom but this would probably be easier to adjust anyway you just make a tall nut with your cam hole in it and with some means to keep it some means to keep it from sliding back out this back wall um, several ways to go about that and I haven't exactly decided but I'm going to tackle this as my project I've had a lot of laid projects that I have uh, did when I first made my quick change two post to mount on on it. Then I made a compound. Then I bought a uh, a threading dial off of eBay. Had to modify it somewhat to make it work on my lathe. Mine did not come with a threading dial. Uh, few other things I have done. I've made some gears. Uh, the, the gearing chart paper that I got with mine showed how to cut the different threads by positioning the gears. The only problem was every every gear thread they showed took 240 gear, number 40 gears and they didn't get maybe one. So I, was, <laughs> I could not cut any gears until I made uh, a 40, another 40 tooth gear. So I did that. I have made some other devices over here. Let's see if I can just show one right over here. Alright. Alright, I actually got some light over here. It might make it look a little bit better. Alright, here we go. This is not the standard part. You know, the, the standard part has one of these little uh, oiler doodads on the end. Look, all the doodad with a little clip right there. The uh, the clips paint the butt. They get loose and they fall off. So depending on where the gear is at, some rotate one way that will help them to tighten down but then the next gear obviously is going to be loosening so they can loosen up and fall off while you're running but anyway I'm changed I should change mine out by making these right here uh, instead of making them for a wrench I put a hole in it Real easy to use a little bar. I keep it laying right. Thing it's not. The camera does not shoot where I point it. That's that's why I'm, I usually point it in the wrong direction. But this is little bar right here. I keep it right here. Real easy. Just stick in the hole and use that for my wrench. It works great. And I have made some of these. Uh, slides right here that go behind the, the fork and if I'm thinking about cutting a certain thread I can go ahead and set my gears up with all the parts because I have made all the parts separately even some washers you see my uh, aluminum washers right there and uh, I never never is trying to get back where I have some light I never really tightened my fork 
it will it takes a little bit of pull on it but it it pulls out um, and I have cut the top out of it very dark on my camera but should have some light. I have cut the top out of the fork so now I can just loosen it just pull the whole just pull the whole gear out of it they just slide right down I can slide my my new pieces up and it really takes a lot of time and this feature right here had a another benefit that I wasn't aware of when I was making it it acts as sort of like a clutch uh, I am notorious for being absent-minded and sometimes when I engage this and I have my stop right here set. It's been a few times I've taken my mind off of it for some reason and it has hit the stop. Well, uh, that could be bad on gears and a whole lot of other things except for with this right here being not real tight where it will pull out this really acts like a clutch. If this jams, this spindle gear here turning, something is going to give, and actually it just pushes and uh, turns this gear right here and just uh, kind of engages it and pushes it right out and it kicks out and it stops. Now, I, I certainly don't rely upon this because <laughs> as surely as I did, I. I have to make me a few more gears or something I'm going to give. And it probably wouldn't push out that particular time. But every time I have goose, which has been probably a half a dozen since I've had this layer, it has just pushed it right out and the carriage stops. So I've got a, I got a backup for my brain that don't work all the time. But I'm not relying on it. So... So anyway, it, it does work so far, and that's a good feature that I wasn't aware of when I was when I was making it. Okay, uh, back to my current project. Oh, current project here it is over here. Right now, I'm trying to work out the details. As I said, this camera doesn't point. It points much higher than where it shoots. So, so I always have to aim way over. I'm going to make a nut right here. Um, drill it and thread it. And put a cam hole on the back side. And then I'm going to lay out the, the drill hole. Where am I? Then I'm going to lay out the drill hole and see if I can uh, put a bush into it and the bar and see if I can figure out a way to keep it in there with some kind of a snap ring or uh, something to that effect anyway. So that is the project. Alright, here we go.